So union find is one data structure which arose out of a need to optimize one of our graph algorithms, namely the minimum cost panic tree. The other algorithm which we need to optimize in the graph thing is Prim's algorithm and also Dijkstra's algorithm. And there we had the problem that at every step in the iteration, when we were trying to extend the shortest path or grow the smallest tree, we had to scan the vertices which had not been added and find the smallest one to add. Right? So this operation turned out to be expensive. We had to go through a collection of items and find the smallest one. And there was no easy way to do this because those items were being reduced in some somewhat unpredictable way. So we would not be able to keep them in some meaningful sorted list. So we had to keep scanning all of them to find the minimum. And this was again giving us an order n worst case per loop and giving us n squared overall. So now what we will look at is a data structure to handle that problem. So abstractly, although it doesn't seem to be immediately relevant, this is what is called a priority queue. So let's look at an independent motivation for priority queues. So priorities happen all over the place. So for instance, in a computer, in an operating system, this is something which is routinely done, which is that there are a number of tasks which are running. But if there is something very high priority which comes, then whatever is running has to be suspended and something else has to be taken in its place. So this is done by something called a job scheduler. So a job scheduler keeps a list of tasks which are running and then it has to decide at each uh, unit when it's allowed to switch tasks, which one to schedule next. Right? So a job scheduler maintains this list of pending jobs, jobs which are yet to be done and each of them has a priority. So the rule that you would typically like to guarantee because the priority is supposed to indicate some preference to do it first, right? So when the processor is free, the scheduler should pick out a job which has highest priority and schedule it for some time. So the question is, how can you do this efficiently, right? Because new jobs keep coming. This is not a static, see if it was a static thing, then you can sort it. You can sort it by priority once and for all and then move from highest priority to lowest priority. But the problem is that this is a dynamic thing. So as people are using the computer, they will start new tasks. And these new tasks might have higher priority than old tasks. Right? So new jobs may join the list at any time. So the scheduler has to maintain this growing and shrinking list. Every time it takes something out of the list, it removes a job of high priority and executes it. Something else may come which will disturb the priority order of the remaining things. Right? So a good analogy of this in a kind of human context is when you go to say a very crowded temple, right? So there are people who have bought a ticket and they are standing in line, but then every now and then a few VIPs will come who will come and disturb the queue, right? So these are the high priority people and whoever is managing this process has to accommodate these people without of course upsetting the other people too much. So this is this priority, right? So it's not really a queue. You're standing in line, but your place in line could be taken by somebody who has come in with some influence some VIP privileges. So with priority, they can overtake you, right? So that's why a queue normally is you go and stand in a line. When your turn comes, you get served. In a priority queue, you can get jumped, right? Somebody can come and bypass you because they have higher priority. And the question is, if this is the desired outcome, then how do you manage it? So abstractly in a priority queue, we have to maintain a collection of items. It's not a queue in the normal sense, so we can't guarantee that it's a, you know, it's a list or a sequence. We have to maintain it in whatever way we want. But the two operations that we primarily have to support, one is to, of course, extract the highest priority thing. So we will call it delete max. So delete max says find the maximum priority item in this set and pull it out. That's the one to process next. That's the next uh, devotee who gets to get, go and do darshan in the temple. This is the next job that gets scheduled on my processor, right? So now it is removed from this collection. So that's the simplest thing that we can do. But this is dynamic, right? This is not a once and for all thing. Otherwise, you could just sort it and be done with it. So there is also an insert operation. So periodically, new people will come for darshan and they will have their own priority, right? Some of them would have some local official uh, vouching for them. Some of them will be coming from some, uh, you know, some international dignitary. Some of them will just be norm janta, right? So then each person will have its own priority. So each job will have its own priority. So you have insert and you have delete max and you have to balance the two so that you do everything efficiently. That's the whole problem that we are facing with Dijkstra's algorithm that as the distances change, how do we keep track of the shortest distance? So there is not minimum, maximum, but minimum, but it's dual as you can see, right? Removing the smallest priority 
or removing the largest priority are just the same problem, you are just reversing the comparison. Right? So, this is what we want to implement. We want to implement delete max and insert and what we were doing in, in uh, Dijkstra's algorithm okay, was naively maintaining just this array or list of vertices with their current distances. Right? So, this was an unsorted list. Right? So, in an unsorted list, right, when we discovered a new vertex to which we have found a path, we can just update its thing. So, at constant time, we can insert a vertex into this list. But when we want to delete max, we have to scan all the unvisited vertices to find the smallest one. Right? So, remember max and min are dual. So, in this similar way, if I want to find the maximum priority in a list, I have to go through, you know the max algorithm, right? you set the first one to be max and you keep updating. But there is, if it is not sorted, you have no guarantee where the max is. So, you have to look through the whole list. So, max is order n, but insert you can just put it anywhere, you can put it at the end of the list and you are done. So, insert is order 1. So, of course, if this is a static list as we said, you could be clever and sort it once and for all. Right? So, if you maintain a sorted list, then delete max is easy because you know the delete max is at the end. So, remember if you are using a python list, we saw that uh, python list you can actually delete at the end better than deleting the beginning because they are actually arrays with an end pointer. So, let us say we keep it in ascending order, then the last element is my max, so I just pop it constant time. But if I insert it, now we go back to our insertion sort, you have to actually find the place to insert. So, you might have to shift a lot of elements. So, you have to scan and find and shift. So, whether you are using a random access or a list, you have to spend order n time. So, you trade off one for the other, right? If it is unsorted, adding is easy, but finding maximum is hard. If it is sorted, finding maximum is easy, but adding takes time, right? So, this more or less tells us that with a kind of one dimensional implementation in terms of as a list or an array, we cannot avoid this because these are the two extremes anything there is no other thing that you can do with a one dimensional list in some sense. Right? So, either you can keep it sorted or unsorted and one or the other will become expensive. So, if I am thinking in terms of n elements, so in the temple in the morning the temple is empty, n people come and n people leave right? by the end of the day. So, I have to process n inserts and n delete maxes. In the worst case, I am going to end up doing n squared time right? because either the insert is going to be order n time or the delete is going to be an order n time. So, we want to do better than this. So, since we have exhausted the possibilities of doing this in one dimension using a list or an array, the natural uh, option is to move to two dimensions. Right? So, if we move to two dimensions, then we have to remember this is why I said at the beginning that this is not necessarily a sequence. I am not claiming this is a sequence. It is a collection. It is up to you to maintain this collection in whatever way it is best for you to find the maximum and delete it. So, now I am going to keep it as a, a matrix in some sense, right? as a two dimensional grid. So, just for convenience, I am going to assume, right? we will come back to this at the end, I am going to assume that I know totally how many things are going to come. Right? I have some estimate that I am going to do n of these operations over a period of time. So, given that n, right? so in this case let us say n is 25, what I do is I keep a square which is root n by root n. Right? So, in the case n is 25, this is 5 by 5. Right? So, I have a, a square matrix where I can keep track of these. Uh, so, remember these are all have to be identified some way. Right? So, every person who is in the queue or every job that is waiting to be processed has some identity and I has some priority. So, I need to be able to pick out that individual element which has the highest priority. So, I need to store it somewhere. So, these are the values. So, in this case, I am collapsing the two. So, the value is the priority. So, 17 has a lower priority than 43, for example. Right? So, I am just using the values themselves as the priorities in this thing. Uh, and uh, the priorities need not be distinct. So, I think, uh, I am not very sure if there are duplicates here, but there is no reason actually why priority should be distinct. Right? So, there could be more than one highest priority thing and in that case delete max just says choose one. So, there is no guarantee that the priorities are actually distinct. So, there is another pattern to this which is that every row that I am storing actually increases in priority from left to right. Okay? So, there is it looks sort of random, but it is not completely random. So, in the in the sorted array implementation, the entire set was kept sorted. Now, I am keeping these sort of sorted segments of size root n. Right? 
right. So, the first row is sorted, second row is sorted and you can see that you know they are of different lengths, right. So, there is no particular uh, order to the uh, lengths of these arrays. So, I am not, I am not filling up this thing necessarily, you know, and keeping it filled from top to bottom, right. So, they, so, but in every row it is filled from left to right. So, I will not put this 20 over here and leave a gap in the middle, but the rows are of different lengths. So, each row is sorted and I have square root of n rows and each row has square root of n elements. So, this is my proposed two dimensional way of storing the list of or the sequence of values or the collection of values which are yet to be processed, right. So, now given this, I have to tell you how to do insert and delete max. So, it turns out that because these uh, rows can be of different capacities in terms of how many elements are there, it is better for me to keep track of that separately, right. So, I will keep track of a separate column which tells me how many elements are currently stored in each row of my matrix, right. So, remember in this case is 5 by 5. So, the maximum that can be stored in a matrix row is 5, but I could have fewer. So, here there are 5 and 5, but here there are only 3 elements, here there are 4 elements, here there are 2 elements. So, that is what this red column is telling me. So, I keep track of the size of each row. Now, I want to insert. So, where would I insert? Well, I will insert it in the first place that I can insert it, right. So, I just walk down this, uh, this matrix and I try to find the first row in which there is space. So, I insert, so I come down here, right, and I will find that the third row has space. So, whatever I want to insert next will go into the third row. And insert means in that row I have to maintain this ascending order, right. So, depending on the value that I insert, its position in this row will depend on what it is. So, let us do a concrete example just to illustrate. So, supposing we want to insert the value 15, right. So, what we will do is we will first look at the first row. So, how do we know that it cannot fit? We do not have to scan the row, we just have to look at the size. The size tells us that this row is full, right. So, I do not have to look at this row element by element. I already know it is full, so I move to the next row. Again, the size tells us that this row is full, so I move to the next row, right. But I am just scanning the rows from top to bottom. So, I now find that this row has space. Okay. So, since this row has space, I will, if I start inserting from the left, I am guaranteed that I will be able to accommodate 15. So, I insert from the left and I accommodate it, right. So, now 15 is inside this uh, grid in a place which is appropriate given its value, right. It is in a row in ascending order in one of the rows. And the other thing now I have to do is I have to update the size because this row used to have 3 elements, that is what this 3 is saying, but it no longer has 3 elements. So, when I insert into that row, I also have to update the size to be 4, right. So, this is my insert operation. Walk down looking at the size, try to find which row, the first row from the top which has space, then apply our usual insert, the same insert that we use for insertion sort, insert it into the correct position and update the size, right. So, how much time does it take? Well, remember that this is root n and this is root n, right. So, I am doing a scan from top to bottom. Remember, I have assumed that I always have space, right. So, I have actually created a large enough square that I have space for all the n things which could ever be there simultaneously. So, there is always going to be at least one row which has space. It might be the last row in which case I will actually scan all the rows. So, I will actually have to scan this entire column in order to find the first row which has space. So, that is going to take me root n time because I go from top to bottom in a list of length root n. And then having found it as we remember from insertion sort to insert something in a in a row of, of size k, I will spend order k time because I may have to walk the entire list to find the place to put it in. So, this is also going to be order n, order root n. So, I have order root n to find the row, order root n to insert. So, totally is going to take me order root n time, right. So, this is my insert. Now, what about delete max, right. So, delete max does not take an argument. It just says find a maximum element and return it to me. But what do we know now? We have not used so far the fact that these rows are sorted in ascending order. So, remember that when we were looking at a single list, we said the sorted list is good because the maximum is always at one end of the list. Well, here it is not at one end of the list, but it is at one end of one of the rows, right. So, we know for sure that for each row the maximum is on the right and the rightmost elements if I take the maximum of those is going to give me the overall maximum, right. So, the maximum in each row is the last element and what is the last element? Because remember the position of the last element is different in different rows. Well, this tells me, right, 
This tells me that the last element is the fifth element, this tells me that the last element is the fourth element and so on. So I can go and find the last element by looking at the size of the element, uh, size of that row. So I can quickly find out the last position in each of the rows which has a value. And now I have to take among these, so it's the maximum of these maximums, right? The overall maximum will have to be the maximum in its row. It will be at the rightmost endpoint and it will be the maximum among all the right, rightmost endpoints. So I'll have to walk down this list of these five numbers. So these are the five numbers that now I have to walk down. So I have to walk down this list of five numbers and find the maximum. So I will do that and I find that the maximum amongst these is 67 currently, which is in the second row. So I have to delete it. So I'll have to take this and pull it out. Right? So I pull it out and then when I pull it out, I have to update this size. The size used to be 5 and now I have to make it 4. Right? So find the maximum by looking at the rightmost elements in all the rows and having found it, remove it and update the size. So how long does this take? Well, again it takes order root and time because this, I, this first step of finding this maximum, right? I need to con construct this list of size root n and find the maximum in it, which is a root n operation because I have to do one scan. And then in this case, having found it, the delete is actually a constant operation. I just have to remove it from the array. I have to basically, and removing it from the array also is technically, I have to return the value. I don't have to remove it. I just have to logically remove it by saying that the row is one level shorter. So don't look at the four, fifth element. Now look only up to the fourth element, right? So deletion of the element from the array is actually order one, but totally delete max is root n. Right, so what we have now is that if we move from this one dimensional list of size n to a two dimensional array of root n by root n, then we trade off the two, right? And that original thing, one was order one, either insert was constant time and uh, delete max was linear time or insert was linear time and delete max was constant time. And that was giving me in the worst case n into n. Now instead, I have made them both come close to each other. So I have pushed one to square root of n, but I brought down the other to square root of n. So both insert and delete max are now square root of n. So now if I do this n times, I take an empty collection and I insert into it n times and I remove from it n times, then I will do n root n work for the insertion, n root n work for the deletion, right? And so the total time is going to be n root n. So I have come down from n squared to n square root of n. So this is a saving from n to the power 2, right? I have come to n to the power 3 by 2. Right? So this is certainly a saving. Now it turns out that we can do actually much better than this. Okay? Much better in the sense that in our asymptotic complexity sense, we can come down from the square root of n to actually logarithmic time. So we need a slightly more sophisticated two-dimensional structure, okay, which is a binary tree and a specific type of binary tree which we will see which is called a heap. And this heap will have, so here I have this height is square root of n. This binary tree height will be logarithmic, right? So that will be the where this n log n comes from. And all our operations will turn out to be proportional to the height of the tree. And as a result, insert will become logarithmic, delete max will become logarithmic. So over n such operations, instead of doing n times root of n, I will be doing n times log of n. So this is what we will see next.